Do you fully understand, and it took me a little while to fully understand it, and I'm on top of these things, what's going on with these new emails in the Internal Revenue Service? I want to walk you through this a little bit. This is why people are so angry with the federal government, and I do not think we should take it out on our military, because the same people who are doing these things at the IRS and these other places hate the military. Katie Pavlich is a young lady, and she really is a rising star. Smart, excellent writer, quick off the block when debating liberals, and a true investigative journalist. And she reports that, as our friend Brian Preston points out of PJ Media, that newly released IRS emails prove, here we go, that former honcho Lois Lerner contacted the U.S. Department of Justice about prosecuting some tax-exempt groups in May 2013. That is less than a year ago. The emails were released through a Judicial Watch FOIA. Now, this learner, who is diabolical, wrote the email shortly before an Inspector General's report would make the IRS abuse of conservative groups public. Now, that's my group, Landmark Legal Foundation, that triggered the Treasury Department investigation that led to the initial report. Lerner got ahead of that by apologizing for the abuse via a planted question in a conference call with the American Bar Association, of which I am proudly not a member, and haven't been, I think since law school or thereabouts, I can't remember. Lerner emailed the IRS Commissioner's Office about the Department of Justice on May 8, 2013, just two days before she disclosed the abuse scandal, asking the Department of Justice whether groups could be criminally prosecuted for lying on their tax-exempt request form. So let's step back. This diabolical woman, through the American Bar Association, plants a question because she knows this Treasury Department report is going to be released, apologizes for any wrongdoing involving, you know, these the various groups, the abuse of various groups, and ladies and gentlemen, essentially at the same time, She's backdooring to the Department of Justice, saying, shouldn't you prosecute some of these groups? Let's step back further. The IRS was being pressured, not just to investigate, but prosecute these groups by a number of Democrat senators. We talked about this four, five, six weeks ago with our friend Bradley Smith, among others, former FEC commissioner. The IRS was being pushed by Schumer being pushed by the city at uh, White House or Whitehorse, whatever the hell his name is, from Rhode Island, being pushed by Carl Levin, not merely to investigate these groups, but to prosecute these groups. And they weren't alone. It was a Democrat plan. So we have Democrat, elected Democrats in Congress, pushing the Internal Revenue Service. You have partisan Democrats like Lois Lerner in a position she should never have been in, backdooring to the Department of Justice, encouraging other Democrats to prosecute these Tea Party groups for false representations. All right? This is big. This is big. In another time and day, this would be the scandal of all scandals that would chase Obama out of the White House. I don't know anything. Right! That's why you should get the hell out. But I don't believe he doesn't know anything. You don't have any proof. Well, give me subpoena power. Give me Appoint me special prosecutor. I'll work on it. Don't you love the left? There's no evidence. Okay, well, let's invest. Ah, no special prosecutor. Close the damn thing down. Well, we want to look. I ah, can't look. So here is uh, one of these emails. Quote, I got a call today from Richard Pilger, Director Elections Crime Branch at the Department of Justice. Lois Lerner wrote on May 8th to Nicole Flax. I know there's a lot of name, but these are senior people. Chief of Staff to former IRS Commissioner Stephen Miller. All right. So she says she got a call from Richard Pilger, Director, Elections Crime Branch, Department of Justice. And she wrote this to the Chief of Staff to the former IRS Commissioner. He wanted to know who at IRS, the Department of Justice folks, could talk to about Senator Whitehouse's idea at the hearing that the Department of Justice could piece together false statement cases about applicants who, quote-unquote, lied on their 1024s, saying they weren't planning on doing political activity 
and then turning around and making large, visible political expenditures. Department of Justice is feeling like it needs to respond, but want to talk to the right folks at IRS to see whether there are impediments from our side and what, if any, damage this might do to IRS programs. I told him that sounded like we need several folks from IRS, so they're conspiring. Elected Democrat to appointed Democrats. Flax, member of the chief of staff to the then IRS commissioner, in an email said, I think we should do it. Also need to include criminal investigation division, which we can help coordinate. Also, we need to reach out to the FEC. Does it make sense to consider including them in this or keep it separate? So they're getting this whole investigative slash prosecutorial team together. The crimes branch at the Department of Justice. Offices within the Internal Revenue Services. The FEC. The Federal Election Commission. They're wanting to gear up. Now this flax... As I said, working for uh, IRS Commissioner then, Steve Miller, Miller would testify under oath on May 17th of last year that an increased workload was to blame for the abuse. His own chief of staff knew that wasn't true, at a minimum. By the time of Lois, Lerner, and Flax's emails, the abuse had been going on since 2012. Lerner, at least, knew all about it. In these emails, Lerner was seeking to escalate this into a criminal prosecution based on the wishes of a Democrat senator and on her communications with the Department of Justice. Now we know why she pled the fifth. Now we know why she pled the fifth. Now we know why the creep who's the IRS commissioner today said, oh, we can't get these emails done for years. It's going to be many years till we can come up with this stuff, you know, until all my buddies are out of town. Let's look at March 27, 2013, not that long ago. This Lois Lerner emailed staff about an upcoming Senate hearing. You know what she said? She said, quote, as I mentioned yesterday, there are several groups of folks from the FEC world that are pushing tax fraud prosecution for C4s who report they're not conducting political activity when they are, or these folks think they are. One is my ex-boss, Larry Noble, former general counsel at the FEC, who is now president of Americans for Campaign Reform. God, it's so sleazy and incestuous, isn't it? This is their latest push to shut these down. One IRS prosecution would make an impact, and they wouldn't feel so comfortable doing this stuff, she wrote to the IRS staff. So don't be fooled about how this is being articulated. It's all about 501c4 organizations and political activity. It's amazing how many left-wing 501c4 organizations there are that don't have any issues, any problems. On April 9th, that's me, not her, obviously. On April 9, 2013, this Senator Sheldon Whitehouse used a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing to ask Justice Department witnesses why some conservative groups were not being prosecuted. He accused those groups of lying on their tax-exempt status forms. Notice the language? Almost exact with Lois Lerner. After that, Lerner and the Department of Justice communicated about going forward with these prosecutions. Only the impending disclosure of the scheme by the IRS Inspector General, thank me, put a stop to that and got Lerner to disclose the scandal ahead of the Inspector General. If the Inspector General had not been about to go public, the abuse would not only have continued, it would have gone criminal. This, by the way, is why I continue to work with and be associated with the wonderful people at my legal foundation, Landmark Legal Foundation. You know, some people just talk and talk and talk about stuff. Some people talk about it and do something about it, or at least try to. We now have a sitting Democrat congressman, writes Brian Preston at PJ Media, Elijah Cummings, a sitting Democrat senator, Sheldon Whitehouse, the Federal Elections Commission, the U.S. Department of Justice, and the Internal Revenue Service, all implicated in this scandal. And it is a scandal. This former chief of staff, Flax's involvement, puts the abuse squarely into the IRS commissioner's office. But it takes an entity above all those agencies to coordinate their actions. And Preston concludes that entity can only be the White House. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? He's right. These things don't just happen. From the bottom up, as Obama likes to say, particularly in his administration, particularly with his control of the federal government, it's top-down. 
All these things going on at the IRS to suppress the Tea Party movement, to suppress their voter registration drives, to, par- to suppress their participation, legal participation in the process, same as the NAACP does and the ACLU and these other groups. All of a sudden, there's this great interest, 100% exclusively focused on the Tea Party to suppress the vote. And it worked. And who's the major beneficiary of all this? Not Sheldon Whitehouse, not Lois Lerner, not this flax woman, not this kook over at the Justice Department, Barack Obama. He's the beneficiary. And he knew nothing about it. And this guy Fluff knew nothing about it. And this guy Axarod knew nothing about it. And this Valerie uh, Jarrett knew nothing about it. Nobody knew anything. Suddenly we have a gaggle of Helen Kellers. They didn't know anything. Couldn't see anything. Couldn't say anything. Couldn't hear anything. Do you believe that? Can you prove it, Mark? Need a special prosecutor. Oh, and Eric Holder's blocking that because only he can appoint one. Nice and clean, huh, folks? One of the greatest scandals in modern American history when it comes to the government. Right there. 